Hey YouTube, Rook here from Rook Geek Goodness, my little channel on the web for all things geeky and cool. And this video, guys, is another action figure review. We're going to be looking at the GameStop exclusive Marvel Legends 6 inch scale Deadpool back in black figure. Uh, this figure came out at the end of 2017 into 2018. I was really looking forward to this figure when I saw it on Black Friday of November of last year. A lot of GameStops didn't have this figure in stock, and it came out about a month or so later where some stores were getting it in small quantities, like maybe one or two in a store. So you might be asking yourself, what the heck is this figure all about? When the heck did Deadpool get the Venom symbiote suit? Well, that's kind of funny because what this figure takes liberty from is a storyline that came out called Deadpool Back in Black. It came out in 2016 of October 2016. It was a five issue mini series. Now what Marvel normally does, a lot of their books actually, is something called a what if story, where basically they would take a storyline, instead of it going in direction A, it would move in direction B instead. And this is what this the whole thing is all about, the Deadpool Back in Black. So the idea is for the story because I'd actually read the story I did a lot of research based on this video so what happened was spider-man found the actual black symbiote suit in a special storyline called secret wars back in the I think it was the mid 80s it was I think a 12 issue uh, arc I believe I could be wrong there but I believe secret wars was a 12 issue arc where spider-man eventually got the actual black symbiote suit it was a little black globe on battle world so he actually brought that suit back to Earth after the whole storyline ended, had this black suit on. Eventually, Reed Richards from the Fantastic Four fame found out the suit was actually sentient, was trying to bond with Peter Parker, Spider-Man, and he wanted to get the suit off him. So in the original comics, what would happen is the suit actually was removed, detached forcibly from Peter Parker by Reed Richards' help, and it slinked off to find Eddie Brock, a.k.a. the original Venom. So in this storyline, instead of the suit slinking off to find Eddie Brock, it attached to Deadpool. That's the whole idea for this figure, and I think it's such a cool take on Venom attaching to Deadpool, the Merc with a Mouth. I think it's such a cool idea. I'm eventually going to read that storyline, but I wanted to actually showcase this figure for you because I think it looks really, really cool. So that being said, a little background on the whole Deadpool back in black. We're going to do a full breakdown segment. I'm going to do a full package review, take this figure out of package. We're going to look at the paint, the articulation, the accessories, and conclude the video with final thoughts for you, the viewer. Should you actually spend money for the Deadpool? back in black figure from Marvel Legends in a six inch scale. Stay tuned guys, we're gonna go to a breakdown. All right guys, we're in our breakdown segment looking at the GameStop exclusive Marvel Legends six inch figure Deadpool back in black. The very first thing we always do is look at the packaging and presentation. It's a really cool looking packaging. Up at the top with the black uh, sort of trim up here that says Marvel Legends. On the bottom you have the really cool Deadpool, sort of like the 70s disco looking logo here. It says of course back in black at the bottom. On this side you have sort of a side shot of how he actually represented how he looked in the actual 2016 comic series back in black where this figure takes liberty from. On this side you have the same identical Thing with him in the black and white suit. On the top here, you have sort of a logo. I'll kind of pull back a little bit so you can see it. It's a black and white version of his head, his normal logo he uses, which normally is red and black. And on the back of the actual figure, you have sort of a presentation of how he could be displayed. This is the way that I'm actually going to display this figure as you currently see it right here. Now, there's a little write up over here in multiple languages. I want to read it out to you guys because what it says here is increased aggression, question mark, boosted strength, question mark. Nah, he's just in it for the slimming black suit. And I can really see Deadpool saying something something as snarky as that. So I definitely like the whole packaging as a whole. If you were curious, down here it does say the price point, which is $22.95. Well worth the money, in my honest opinion. You get a lot of value packed into this actual figure. So let's actually get this guy out of packaging and go into a full breakdown of the figure out of packaging. All right, guys, we actually have the Deadpool back in black figure out of packaging. So the very first thing we always do is look at the paint and the sculpt and design first. So the paint, of course, is all black and white throughout the entire figure. Now, I did think they took liberty from what I've heard in other reviews is that this buck here, the body, which means the sculpting for the legs, the chest, not the head, but everything else about the figure was used from a figure called the Blizzard figure for Marvel Legends from several series ago. That's where they actually took this design from. The head sculpt here is new. This is an original head sculpt is much different than your typical Deadpool head from we normally see. I do like the way it looks. The presentation looks spot on. It's black and white throughout the entire figure. You got the little Deadpool logo right here on his belt. And on the back there is a hole, which you'll see right here, a peg point that you can plug something in, which is in one of his accessories, which we'll talk about shortly. So let's actually look at the head sculpt itself. The head sculpt looks really, really nice. It looks just like Deadpool. Again, they tweaked it a little bit because this is a brand new head sculpt for him. Now, if we look at the actual articulation and how it actually poses, let's break that down as well. The head itself can go up and down, left and right, spin 360 with no issues. Arms can go all the way around. If you notice, you'll hear it coming to my mic, 
here clicking. Nice clicky joints. I do like these joints. They sound really, really good, really, really tight. I do like that. Uh, both arms do that. Spins 360 with no issues at all. Arms can go out to a full T, as you can see here. The bend for articulation is you have a double jointed elbow right here on the right hand, which will be across your left. He has a 360 wrist here, wrist swivel up and down. And this hand he has right here is a thwip hand, like a Spider-Man web shooter hand, which is what I'm going to display him with because I think it looks so neat, so different. You don't normally see Deadpool with a Spider-Man web shooter hand like this. I'm going to keep this hand as it's currently displayed. His left arm, same articulation, same clicky joints, double jointed in the elbow, wrist spins 360, and there is articulation on the wrist as well, up and down movement. Now, if we go down to the actual moving his arms out of the way, let's actually look at his chest. Chest goes all the way down. There is an ab crunch, very, very nice ab crunch, holds the pose, it's not loose. You can see it moving, but it's staying in position. You can spin the waist 360 degrees, as you see right here. There is sort of a belt here. You will have the weir articulation cut, where if you do this, it looks a little off. I don't know if you can see it, but there's the way the waist uh, sort of like levels off, it like sort of uh, doesn't line up properly if you turn them cockeyed like this. It looks a bit awkward, so you want to keep them in sort of one set of poses here. Now, if you go down further to the leg, Legs. The legs themselves can go, he can do a big kick, as you can see here, long amount of articulation, long amount of movement here. The actual leg can spin at the thigh 360 degrees, as you can see right there. Of course, you'll get weird breaks in the paint scheme because the paint is sort of linear throughout the entire figure, as you can see here, there's lines through the figure. Uh, as far as getting him into, a, let's say, a full split, you can, but it looks a little awkward here, the way the actual joint at the actual waist is, but you can get him pretty much into a full split. Again, 360 60 on the thigh here, spins all the way around, double jointed on the actual knees. You'll see a nice double joint pin right here, two pins in the knee. Uh, the foot, brand new foot sculpts from what I've heard, can bend all the way around, can spin the leg almost 360 degrees uh, with no issues. You can spin the 360 degrees, it was a little bit tight on this figure. Um, let me just get it back in the position, there we go. Uh, foot looks a little awkward now, but you can get a large amount of articulation. The actual, uh, I guess we call it the thigh, the boot cut here, there is 360 swivel if you are curious on that as well. A large amount of articulation on this figure. I do think it looks really, really good as is. I, I really, really like the strong amount of articulation that's actually on this figure itself. Now, let's actually take a look at the accessories. All right, guys, let's talk about Deadpool's back in black accessories. It comes with a lot of stuff for this figure. It comes with two of these really cool pink swords. They're very, very long, identical in size, but they're pink blades with these long, long handles, as you can see here. They're really cool looking handles. I do like the way they look. They are translucent in material. They're identical in design. So if you actually want to see him, what he looks like with one of the actual swords in place, you just simply just slide the sword in through the hilt of his open hand, and it would look something like this. This is what he would look like holding one of the actual long swords, these katanas. I think they look really, really nice. Different sort of approach for the actual blades themselves. I'll bring Deadpool back into the shot. Now, we have a lot of other pieces here. I'll talk about this head at the end here because I have a lot of problems with the head. Um, let's talk about his hands. He has about three different interchangeable hands. He has these two sort of talent hands. This is the left hand. This would be the actual right hand. So it's very, very easy to swap the hands out of the figure. You simply just pull it as you can see here, there's a little point, a little peg point here. Uh, this would be the right hand, which will plug that one in. This is what I'm actually going to display the figure with. I'm going to use the kind of how it looks in the back packaging of the actual figure. So here's what he would look like with that clawed talon hand, if you want to see. Uh, it looks really, really cool, actually. I do like the way he looks with the thwip hand and the actual clawed talon hand. Uh, what I would have done, though, if you look on the actual talon hand here, I would have put some paint right on the top of the actual hand right here, because that's what he's actually known for when he had the Venom suit, and of course when Spider-Man had it, this is where the webbing actually came out from the top of the hand, not from the actual underneath hand like this is right here. It would normally have shot from the top of the palm, which was right here. So I think that was kind of a bad approach. I wish I would have taken that into consideration. I'll put the extra hand back in, so we actually have the gripped hand like he normally had here. Let me fix that there. Actually, wrong hand. Put this one in which is the correct hand. That hand that you saw me put in a second ago was his left hand. This hand here would be replacing this thwip hand on his, which would be your left, my right. 
So I think the heads, the, the, the actual interchangeable hands look really, really cool. I do like that approach where they give us a lot of uh, interchangeability for the actual figure itself. I'll move the hands out of the way and move the swords off to the side for the moment. Now, one thing you can do with Deadpool here is, oops, he fell. One thing you can do with Deadpool here is this tendril piece. This is attachable to the actual figure itself. You notice there's a plug point right here. There's a plug point, which I mentioned earlier, in the back of his actual chest. So you just simply just plug that in. Very easy to attach to this, and it can be posed in a number of different ways. It doesn't really hinder the articulation. I mean, if you move the arm all the way down and try to move it around through the top here, you may run into an issue. Uh, so you can actually pose it in one of kind of two configurations. You can pose it like this with sort of the tendrils out to the side. You can move it sort of this way or move it, let's say, up and down. It's, all, it's really up to you how you want to actually pose this tendril portion here. Uh, I do like how you can actually move it in different uh, poses. So I'm probably going to have mine similar to this here where the tendrils are kind of... Uh, off to the side. I think that's the cooler approach. Now one thing you can do is you can attach the actual swords into the tendrils as I'm holding the tendrils. Some of the tendril points hold better than others. I think it's this one right here which holds really really well. Very very snug. As you can see it's holding it with no problems, no issues. The other ones they have problems from what I've seen. Um, when you try to actually lean the sword into it, it, it kind of leans funny. You have to kind of really finagle it so it will actually will stay properly from what I'm seeing here. The top one doesn't really hold very well. You see me kind of finagling it there. Something along those lines you might be able to do, but it's very, very loose like you just saw it fall there. Uh, I would like to do it maybe through this one, but this one again is not very, very tight from what I'm seeing here. You could probably finagle it so you would hold it like that maybe which might be the approach to take, something along these lines. So you're just holding it in place. It's not falling. Uh, it is kind of stable, but you have to kind of tweak it a little bit to make it work. Uh, I think that looks really, really neat. I do like that presentation. Now I had to re-record this piece because of this head sculpt. Um, I was fighting a lot for about 10 minutes to try to get this head onto his body. I don't know if this sculpt was made incorrectly, but I think the hole on the inside is too small for the joint on the head. I was fighting and pushing and prodding and trying to get this head, I swear to God, guys, onto the body. I could not get this head, this head here, onto this body. I, I think there was a problem with this head sculpt, but at least on mine, from what I'm seeing here. I don't know if it's all of them, but I was very, very much fighting with this head. It looks cool, but even to me, I wasn't going to display this head on this figure. I like this presentation as you currently see here, how it's displayed. W with the exception of the hand, I'll show you my final uh, display option here. This is how I'm going to display this figure, and then we'll go to final thoughts. I'm going to use the wide talon hand in his right hand, which is this one here, and this is how I'm going to display my Deadpool back in black. So let's get him set here. I've kind of put that one back, him holding the actual katana, as you saw me do earlier. Again, it's kind of, you have to kind of finagle it a little bit to make it work. I wish this grip would have been much tighter, uh, and unfortunately it's not the tightest grip. So kind of slide it in, see if I can do it again. It's kind of, like I said, it's kind of tricky to get it to work. You have to, you have to really finagle it to, to get it to hold like I was doing it before. Um, now it's probably not going to work. I'm trying, guys, to get it to work. It's, it's very, very tough to try to get him to hold that sword. It's just the way these tendrils are designed. They're not really designed to grip, so to speak. And this top one here, which you think it would hold, it's very, very loose. This top tendril here is extremely loose. Now I can't get the thing to hold. Something like that. That's good enough for me. It's kind of bouncing. You see it kind of bouncing here. But this is kind of how I would display it. I would try to really try to get this tendril here to hold because I was able to do it earlier as you just saw it. But now it's kind of it's not working as well as I would like it to grip. Uh, you have, like I said, you have, to, you have to really, really mess with it to get it to grip. That would be probably the only issue I had with the figure and that head sculpt uh, is that they don't hold really well. But that would be the only issues I see with this current figure. So let's actually go to final thoughts and wrap up this video. All right, guys, final thoughts on the GameStop exclusive Marvel Legends 6-inch scale back in black Deadpool. I really, really like this figure. I think this figure is 
awesome. There are of course some weak points to this figure, mainly the tendrils as you see here holding the actual swords which I talked about in the breakdown segment. The grip isn't super tight to hold the actual katanas. I do think it looks cool. I do like the idea and the approach. I think the execution was a little bit off from currently seeing here. Again, another point that was I would say a bad point for it, at least on mine, was the actual head sculpt. I can't get this head to attach to the figure. I think the inside of the head here is sculpted too small compared to the ball joint on top of this head. That would be another negative for me. Probably the only other negative I would say about it is this actual figure itself was listed as a GameStop exclusive, but there's no GameStop exclusive label listed on the packaging itself. I think beside those little nitpicky points, and of course I can't use this really, can't use this head really, because I can't get the damn thing to fit on it. I actually cut my knuckle open trying to actually get the head attached to the figure. I spent, like I said in the breakdown, literally 10 minutes forcibly trying to shove that head onto that ball joint. It was extremely, extremely difficult and I had to reshoot my entire ending of my video here because of it. So definitely take care with this actual head sculpt. You might not have the issue like I did. I think this was sculpted incorrectly based on what I'm currently seeing here. But beside those points, I think this is a really cool figure. Highly articulated, highly detailed, really cool approach to taking Venom and Deadpool merging together based in the 2016 miniseries that came out for this figure. He's also had the name nickname called Venom Pool. People called him Venom Pool in the actual series as well. I really, really like this figure. I highly, highly recommend it. Even with those, those small shortcomings, definitely, definitely buy this figure. I wish I would have had, of course, the white on the actual paint on the hands, but that's a nitpick I can let go. Definitely click that like button if you like this video. Click the subscribe button, which will picture my face. When you subscribe to my channel, make sure you click the little bell icon to be notified of my latest videos. And last but not least, you can click Windows over here to watch more of my content. Take care, guys. I'll see you next video, and bye-bye.